Bye, shalom, everybody. We're going to start and start off with a prayer. Father, y'all, we come before you right now. Just thank you right now for just being with us right now this day, Father, y'all. Father, y'all, we thank for our life, hope, and strength. Father, y'all, we just think right now we should begin to praise and worship you even more in the Ruach of Truth right, right now. Father, y'all, we just thank you right now for just waking us up this day in the land of the living. And, and we just thank you right now, Father, y'all, we come against all forms of infirmities, all forms of sickness, everything that's not like you, Father, y'all, we rebuke right now. And we just thank you right now if we give praise right now to you and the name of your son, Yahushua Mashiach, we pray, so be it. All right, Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Today's lesson, we're going to kind of go into a little of our history, and uh, we're going to try to clear up a few things here. And I'm going to start off by basically uh, going into most of the time when I'm talking, I always say I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Hebrew. But what I'm saying is I'm the people of the book, and what I mean by when I say I'm not a Hebrew, what I mean is I don't identify with the people that are on the street corner that are cursing folks out and doing all this rhetoric and stuff. But what, and I know that they are our brothers, but I'm saying I don't identify in the actual religion that they're actually claiming to be and I identify with what the book says as in the actual scriptures. Okay, now, so Ibram, ivory is the word that is derived from Eber, which is the great grandson of Noah's son, Shem, hence where they get the word Hebrew from. And basically, so I'm still speaking of those that came through the scripture that was with Moses in Egypt and everything of that nature just not identifying with a cult or, or some type of, I would say, camp or anything of that nature. And uh, so basically we're gonna look at here a few scriptures to, to try to clear up a few things. Like when I say I'm not a Christian, what I mean by Christianity is, 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 is preached unto us another gospel. And what, what the apostle Paul said, if I, uh, angel from heaven, preach any other gospel, let them be a curse. And so the other gospel is giving us a, giving us an image of Yahushua Hamashiach, which is really Sergio Borgio, which is, you know, the, the picture that they paint white. Everybody put it up. Most grandmothers have it hanging up on the wall. Well, that is not the image. It's not supposed to be any images. The image is created after anything that we're supposed to refer to coming from Shamayim. And based on scripture and based on the evidence that I've come up with, he will be our color, not that color. And this is just the blatant truth. This isn't uh, being prejudiced, if you say I'm prejudiced, then you're saying that the most high is prejudiced because this is how it goes down. And uh, so basically, so we're going to look at a little history of them getting into actual Egypt. Uh, Abraham was already prophesied about this uh, prior to all this going on. Then when you get and you fast forward unto Jacob and his sons getting jealous of, of Joseph and begin to sell him to one of the officers of Pharaoh, which is Potiphar. We have this situation where Judah, which is the fourth son of Jacob and Leah, which means praise. When she had him, she said, now I will praise Yah, I will praise Yahuwah. So this is the one that said, don't kill our brother. Don't kill him, let's sell him. And so when Judah began to say that, they began to throw him into the pit. And you know, as we fast forward the story, Jacob thinks a wild beast had eaten him. Okay, so now we get into Egypt and we actually see the situation where the famine came. And as the famine came, they had to come there. And of course, the sun, moon, and the stars had to bow down just like a dream. Because when he came up, they was all jealous of him saying, here comes this dreamer. You know what I'm saying? So now let's see what becomes of his dream. They were just jealous of him. But that's not the basis of this story. The basis of this story is to show that Yahuwah has a people. And what we're doing in Christianity, Christianity is mixing up the people that Yah is saying is people with the promised seed of Abraham when they say that everyone can come in through the faith. And see, it's the thing. So they are children of faith, but they're still a children of Yah. Because when you read certain scriptures, you'll see when the apostle begin to write and he say unto the Hebrews. And then we'll go to James, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. So he has the people. We want to go into this because what it is, and it's a whole lot of stuff I want to get into because what we're in now is modern day Egypt right now. What they have done is put you in a situation where you think that just because they pacified you with a form of Yah, and the scripture says, even in the King James Version, say having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And this is the thing. See, we can't see because the reason why I'm going here, because a lot of us even be like, oh, don't worry about that. That don't matter. It doesn't matter to me because I'm confident in the Ruach. But what I'm saying, it gives a person low, that has low self-esteem, some form of confidence to know who they are and where they're from. Because if we really look at it, most of the shootings and stuff that you see going on 
You don't see any of the Asians being shot. You don't see the Italians being shot because they have people that can come back and look after them that'll see about them. But they tell us we are African-American or we're this, or we're that. We're not those things that they tell us when they try to make us be something that we're not. They took away our identity. Revelation talk about those Jews that are saying they're Jews that are not. We know those that are over there now in the land of Khazar. We know they're Polish and Russian descent. We know this. This is what I'm explaining by they're just imposters. They're over there masquerading as us, and they're not. And this is what we. This is what I'm getting at to clear up. Yeah, I know who I am, and I don't take away the pride of being who I am. But I understand that without the Mashiach, I won't make it into the kingdom. So when he's coming back, he's not coming back for lawless people like those tribes that are actually in the Book of Revelation, the 144,000. They wasn't lawless. Those, they were the ones that understood what's going on that actually died in Mashiach prior or uh, in Mashiach, you know, died prior to Mashiach or died in Mashiach. So you're not going to have a situation where the Most High is coming back for heathens. I'm going to show you the scripture where he didn't cast us away, but at the same time, the Gentiles were coming in to provoke us unto jealousy so that we can turn back to Yah. That we will be actually the forerunners. A lot of people twist up the, the scripture of Peter when they talk about bringing you out of the darkness to the mother's light. That's to the Gentiles. That's to those strangers. When you read the first Peter 1, they begin to tell you unto the strangers. They don't say unto us. Like we were, we were not once not a people. We were the people. That's the thing. <laughs> That's why he began to tell them you were once not a people. Now you are a people. So I'm going to go into details to try to clear this up so a lot of people realize, yeah, I'm not claiming to be like on the street corner shouting anything, but I am, you know, of this seed, you know, saying that we're going to read about based on this, based on what I believe you know, that sells in my heart, but it's not nothing I boast in, I boast in Mashiach, but I don't, it's nothing that we erase and say don't worry about it because we did not worry about it when they put the white Sergio Borgia on the wall like that. So now there's, there begins to be a problem when we question and say, okay, what is this that Christianity has showed us? Like, you know, it was not a problem as long as they thought, you know, he was white. So now that we see he's discolored, it begins to be an issue. Coons begin to say, don't worry about this, those of our race. That, that wants to just suck up to the system, begin to say, don't worry about that. You're going you know, to make people upset. Well, they weren't upset when they saw he was white when he hung on the wall. So why now? Why do we be quiet? No, it's not about being quiet. It's about not boasting in it. That's the thing. And this is what we have to clear up. You know, I'm not like looking at this saying I deny who I am, but what I am saying, I deny that who I am is going to get me in without the Mashiach. And that's the thing. And so we're looking at the most highest coming back for people and he's going to rep recompense all these different things because of what went on with his people. But he said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You know, so we don't have to worry about trying to go out and take vengeance. And so we're going to get into a lot of this here, like the United States. Like I said, I'm going to get into just briefly, the United States, of course, is a corporation. And if you want to do your research, look what happened to the Indians, how they began to distinct them, the Native Americans, how they began to make them almost where they're invisible, where you can't even see them. You see them every once in a while but you still see us, it's hard to get rid of us because the Most High is not allowing them to just straight out get rid of us. And you do the history, you see the babies being fed unto alligators for alligator bait. I'm saying all this because this is just the truth. A lot of those that may see this, that may be of a different nationality, some may say, well, here are racist, this and that. Well, that, that doesn't mean anything. This is, the, this is the truth. This is documented truth. Look up certain things like COINTELPRO, things that I've been looking at lately about how they destroyed all the black leaders. Not that these people were representing in a sense of holiness or righteousness all the time, but the point was, anytime we begin to get any inkling of who we are, they begin to get offended. Because you look at the old 1720 calendar of Africa, it has Negro land, the kingdom of Judah is on this calendar. We look up the Zonovan definition of Ham, it said, not of the Negro. And so they try to tell you a Hamite, we're not a Hamite, we're from Shem, Shemitic descent. I just read, you know, who you know, Hebrew come from, that's coming from that descent. Ivan come from that descent of Shem or Shemite. And so Hamites are different. They're, they're brothers according to when you go to flesh, but according to the promise, according to scripturally, the seed, they're not, you know what I'm saying? They're not, you know, they're not uh, based upon the, tri the tribe. They're not based upon the 12 tribes. So let's look at this here for what it's worth. We're looking at the United States, of course, being a corporation. Uh, I would call one part of modern day Egypt because we're scattered all abroad. So some of our brothers in London and certain areas, you know, so it's like, but this was one of the places that took slavery to another level because, you know, we, this isn't biblical slavery that we're dealing with that they did. This was brutal punishment. This was like just oppression. See, this is the thing. I don't want to really get into a lot without proving a lot of this stuff, but look up the BLM, the Black Lives Matter, 
think it was started by three women and at least two of them claim to be queer. This is just what it is. If some of this gets flouted, oh well, I mean like that, we're just gonna go forth with the truth. And that right there is to push a different agenda and, and to use us. That's all it is to use us to push a whole different agenda. And we're looking at some of these things that, you know, we have where people are thinking, okay, don't worry about that, just leave it alone. But we don't, we wanna know what we expect. When the clouds break forth, when that trumpet is signed, I know who I'm gonna be looking for. I'm not gonna be looking for Sergio Borgio. That's the problem. So some people are still looking for Sergio Borgio because this is what they have. And a lot of people are making it to the kingdom with this information, you know, long as they, you know, afflict their snow or flesh and begin to just cry out unto Yah, you know, and, and begin to, the Ruach will still come upon people that's ignorant, you know, that don't know any better. But the point is, the words say, he that want to be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. And I desire not to be ignorant. That's the thing. So we desire not to be ignorant too much as given, much is required. That means that now that I find out who I am, I'm supposed to be part of the light of the world. You know what I'm saying part of the solid of the earth, not just somebody that's out there saying who I am. I got to show who I am. And I'm supposed to show those people that don't know Yah who he is. And that's not, you know, conforming to who they think he is, but who he is according to the scripture. And this is the thing. So Christianity makes you be quiet about that and say, don't worry about that. None of that matters. But when you read the whole, everything, all the scriptures, even sometimes you may have to get certain parts of the apocrypha because, you know, Christianity has taught you that's not it. But when you look at the Bible that they get from the Roman Catholic system, the 1611 King James Bible had the apocrypha in it. And I haven't gotten to a lot of it yet, but it's, this isn't just it. The 66 books is not everything that was in the scripture. There were more books because the actual 1611 Bible is where the King James Bible come from. And so it's like, we can't be ignorant. That's the thing. That's why I say, he that want to be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. We have to open up our mind and realize that everything that they've given us, they spoon fed us. And it's like, we have to open up our eyes, begin to seek. The words say, seek and you should find. And we begin to seek knowledge and information, but at the same time, just so we'll have an identity of who we are. We don't need to be thinking that our history started with slaves and that we were snatched. And it's, no, we weren't snatched. It was a actual systematic trade. It was done through intelligence. It was a trade. They looked and saw people and they, they knew what the deal was when they came and got us. They knew who they was getting. So there's no situation where they came and, and stole us and, and nothing happened. They, were, they, were, they had Africans that cooperated. That's why when you most of the time when I see a lot of them, they have a certain cockiness. It's almost like I see the spirit of Pharaoh in some of them. Some of those that even though they have the same skin tone doesn't mean that they are us. And they have made us identify with everybody. Like if you go tell somebody that, that's Chinese, they're Japanese, they'll be offended. But they want us to accept the fact that we African. You know what I mean? That's the thing. So it's like, why is that a problem? And this is what we have to look at. Don't let anybody just force no type of identity on you. You have to know who you are. And this is the thing. So Yahushua Mashiach, you know, and the most side, they see what's going on here. It's like, it's not going to be a situation where all this stuff is going to go without punishment that went on through the ancestors, but it's not us that's going to do the punishment. The punishment is going to come because it's got to happen. According to the, according to the script, it's got to happen. Everything that they sold upon us, they have to reap it because they did it in, in a system that's not just. The, the, the actual new system that we have now is systematic racism. We have uh, we have a lot of things going on that's not of y'all. So we're going to get into Romans so I can explain to people that y'all had just threw his people away just because now some people want to grab hold of Christianity. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, that's why I say I'm not a Christian and I'm not claiming to be a Hebrew Israelite like those that are out there on the street corner, but I am claiming to be what the word derived from, which is Ibra, like that. And so that's what we're going to get at, which is Ibra, basically, which is from Eber, the great grandson of Noah's son, Shem. So let's look at, uh, let's look at Romans chapter 11, starting at the first verse, and we're going to get into whether or not Yah has cast away his people or not, and why he have them, what's, what's the actual job when he bring these Gentiles in, what is he doing provoking us unto jealousy? He wants us to come back, and we'll look at, and another thing I want to get at, you know, anybody that stands up for who they are is a racist than Yahushua Mashiach is, because we're going to get into the scripture of him calling that later a dog. He said, he said, I came into the lost tribe. He said, I didn't come unto you. He said, it's not lawful for me to give the children bread unto dogs. Therefore, he, then everybody, all the Christians say, look and see what Jesus said, which we don't go by the name Jesus, we go by Yusha and shit. But I'm saying, yo, Sergio Bargio, whoever you want to believe, said this. So this is what we're trying to get at. So I'm not trying to be difficult. What I am saying, I'm not, you're not going, I'm not going to let anybody even think that I'm in a box. I'm not in Christianity in what they taught us. I'm not in any of that. I'm into what I'm going to explain right now. Let's look at Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then. 
Has Yahuwah cast away his people? Never. For also I am a Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahuwah has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Oh, so he said Yahuwah has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. And the reason why this is being written, because in the process of all this, we have this, the Romans. We have this right here. We have also uh, the book of James, which I said he talked about the 12 tribes scattered abroad. He writes to the Hebrews, letting them know to get away from all these rituals and stuff that you've done. The whole book of Hebrews talks about them needing to accept Yahushua Mashiach as the high priest and get away from all the rituals and stuff. So this is what I'm trying to explain right here. When we look at this stuff, we 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 kind of have in our mind what's been said in church and what preachers are constantly saying over and over again, telling you who you are, just like I was playing Peter. No, that royal priesthood, he was talking about, yeah, we are, we're a royal priesthood, but he's talking to the scattered strangers at that moment. He's saying, you were once not a people, now you are a people. That's the thing. We were not once not, we were always the people. Yeah, this is the thing. We're getting everything mixed up. We're getting the belief of faith mixed up with the people of Yah, which has to latch hold to faith. The reason why they didn't go into the promised land is said because of unbelief. Remember? So now it's talking about faith that we got to have in Mashiach. So it don't mean that, you know, we're just nobody now because we found out that there, there's no such thing as a New Testament. It's a, a new and renewed covenant, a better covenant, which points to the Mashiach. And, and that same Mashiach came for us. It said, I came into my own, my own received me not. And he began to, to, to latch hold to the faith of certain Gentiles. You remember the century so when you come and say, I've never seen such great faith like this. And you say, you're not worthy to come into my house. And I'm not worthy to come to you. He said, just say in the word. He said, just say it in the word and so shall it be. He said, your servant is made whole. Go that way. So this is the thing. So it was always the faith that moved Yahushua HaMashiach. And so it's like, so it's not about saying that it's not about us. It's that we were so cocky into who we were. We were so cocky into who we were. Look at Peter. We're not going to get into a lot of that, but look at Peter. You know, he was just pumping. Paul had to put him in his place and say, what you getting up for? Now that the Jews are coming, now you see certain Gentiles that you're eating with, you want to act like you wouldn't sit with them now. He was all about who he was as a people. And this is what we have to realize. It can't be so much about us till we shut the gate up, the gate of Shamayim to those that need to come in and hear the truth. Once they latch hold to the truth, this is the thing. We are the natural branches is going to talk about. And the branches that are not the natural branches are going to be grafted into the natural branches. That's the thing. So it don't mean that the natural branches don't exist. So it's, this is what we have to get at. So yes, it does matter, but it doesn't matter above the fact that you have to have faith in the Mashiach. And this is the thing. So the Most High is still going to do his thing. He's still going to punish who he needs to punish. He's still coming back for a people and a people. Even when they came out, a, a mixed multitude came out. We're going to look at Revelation where it's saying there was a number which no man can number after the 144,000. So it's like, it's still... You know, like we can't put it all in one box. That's why the movies came out, still giving us this rapture and all this stuff, because it's like they don't want to see all this stuff go down. It's got to happen. You're not going to escape, you know, for before you get dealt with. That's the thing. So you have to, he let it still, let him be, let him be still. He that's filter, let him be filtered still. When he comes, no man knows the hour of the time, you know. So it's like we have to make sure that we're in a position where we're ready. So it's like you're not going to just, just be uh, disappear in thin air and get away from this stuff. <laughs> you know, it doesn't talk about that. It talks about him having to shorten the days unless they let won't be saved. So as far as so that doesn't line up with getting with nobody disappearing. When I read that, you know, before anything happens. So uh, let's go. All right, I'm still in one. Um, know ye not what the scripture says of Eliyahu, how he makes intercession to Yahuwah against Yashreel, saying, Yahuwah, they have killed your prophets and dug down your altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what says the answer of Yah unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So this is the thing. That's what I have to realize a lot. So everybody ain't just out here ignorantly believing what the people are saying on the street corner, and everybody ain't caught up into Christianity. So it's like there are other people that get what I'm saying and that actually have tuned in and realized that you have to have the Mashiach in order to make it into the kingdom. The thing is, though, the cutoff point came when the Mashiach came it got to a point you had to receive him and there was no way around it but the point the, the problem was when he came he came to plead with his people because he wanted them to come in that's why he told the lady look I have came to those my people and it's not that he haven't came to anybody else but we definitely don't take a back seat because because, because now we have a, 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 a new renewed covenant it ain't that we take a back seat we have a front seat to bring those in 
because it's still talking about us being the natural branches. It's not saying that we can do this in our flesh, but it's saying that if we have that along with the Ruach, then you can know how much greater we are in him, it's, which is in Mashiach. That's why he had to write to the Hebrews and let them know, stop it. Like, you know, I see everything that's going on, but he began, when you get to Hebrews 11 and 1, it began to tell him, said, now faith, which is a something of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. He began to give them a, a line, a rundown of everything that happened. Everybody that used faith, you know, by faith, Abraham believed Yah. You know what I'm saying? Like that, everything that happened through faith, you know, it was like David, you know, killing the lion and the bear. It was like some of the stuff went on, you know, it was all through faith in Yah. Even when he even when he slayed Goliath, it was through the faith in Yah. Elijah, it was through the faith in Yah. I mean, everything that happened through the scriptures was through the faith in Yah. Enoch, when he disappeared through the faith in Yah, he said he had this testimony that he pleased Yah. And it was counted to, to, him, as, to him as righteousness. So, as we look at this right here, we'll look at, he's pointing to us, letting us know about faith. Now he's telling this to the Hebrews, everything that I just said, the now faith. It say without faith is impossible to please Yah, for he that come to Yah must first believe that he is, and that he is reward of those that genuinely seek him. And this is the thing, so we have to look at this for what it's worth, he's just trying to turn us to mix up our, who we are as a people and put some faith with it. Because remember, it was through unbelief that allowed them not to enter into the promise, man. This, hence we have, only Joshua and Caleb and those that were, I think, under at least 20 or 21 years old that went into this promised land. So it's like we have to look at what the Most High is being moved by. He's being moved by faith. So if you know that you are the people and then you have faith along with that, then that puts you in a greater position. And this we have to look at, not saying we take no back seat and like nothing matters no more, because this is easy for those that are of the Gentile descent, especially of the white descent, to say it don't matter when they gave us this Roman situation that's going on where you have, an, and they want to ignore most of the stuff where the Pope and the, and the Father going in the room, they want to separate that from Christianity, but it's all the same. All of it comes from Rome. The whole scenario, you know, you celebrate Christmas, Halloween, everything that they try to give you and they try to stamp it on and make it like it's something that you're doing. And so who they call God, which we say Yahuwah. So it's like, we can't allow them to give us no identity and give us no way to worship. We were supposed to worship. And I had to keep going forward. But that's the reason why Moses pleaded with Pharaoh, let my people go. He said, because I need them to go to do this so they can celebrate a feast for me. He let them know. He said, I don't want, we don't, this Moses is showing a separation. And it ain't saying that you're separating totally from those, but those that are not of Yah, yeah, you are supposed to have a separation. They're supposed to know that there's a difference between you and them. Moses then was not supposed to operate as the Egyptians and serve those false idols that they would serve. And he said, look, my people need to serve me. And so, go ahead, baby. Five. Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be a work, then it is a no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So there's a remnant that's going to be saved by grace. So that's what we have to look at. So it ain't nothing to boast in. It's just the fact that when you know who you are as a people, you just know who you are because it's not a problem. But I just sit back and say, oh, yeah, that's Sergio Bargio. Yeah, that's, that's how he look. The white angels, that's how they look. The, the movie of Moses, everybody white. Oh, that's fine. Nothing, there's no problem when they do it. But when you say that's a lie, you're just stating the truth. Now there's a problem. They want to call you a racist. They want to say, oh, you're trying to call a problem. Not call them a problem. I just, decide, I just desire not to be ignorant. And it don't mean that I'm boastful in who I am, but it means that I would like to know who I am so I can have people have some level of pride in who they are. Even a supervisor have a, a level of pride in, that he take in his job. It don't mean that he's going to be evil into somebody, but he has something that he can identify with. And that's the problem. When they strip us of our identity, that's when the problem begins to come and make us think that we are nothing. So when the people out there shooting, people that don't know the history, they're saying, well, they ain't nothing but just killing each other. It's just those, you know, slaves. They're just killing each other. They don't realize these are our people and, and the punishment is still here because they haven't turned unto Yah. They're still doing the same thing that got us here. And they've, they've got, you know, caught up into the system. They got caught up into what we have going on, which most of the Khazars run, which is the airwaves and the radio wave. They're rapping drill music, you know, all this rap about killing each other and they're acting out on it. And that's what's going on. So it's like, and this is what the Most High is seeing. And so it's still happening. It's like, but when they begin to cry out unto Yah and begin to do like they did back in, uh, Back in Egypt, then he'll begin to hear that. It's like, that's not what's going on. I mean, it's probably why we got to this point where we at, because the strength of those that were of our ancestors that actually had 
some strength about them in their soul. They actually begin to, you know, sing hymns and do things unto Yah that actually begin to move Yah till we got into a position like this. Because if you rewind and go back 400 years, we were not in this position. We were we weren't even able to supposed to be reading. So it's like so that's for if we to stop us from reading, then they'll stop us from knowing who we are and stop us from beginning to see that they're treating us wrong. We're supposed to think that that's okay when it says slaves obey your master, but that's not the kind of master we were supposed to have. And there's so power in the rope, you know what I'm saying? The book, when he began to write to Philemon, he began to say, hey, look, don't do this. You know what I'm saying? I need you to treat him as a brother like that. So this is what we got going on. They didn't treat us as a brother back then. They treated us as something that was less than a dog back then. And this is the way we had to, we had to accept this. But this is where it stops at. This is where our history stops at. And they say, well, that's it. They were just some people we grabbed from Africa. And that's the end of it. That's not true. Because if they let us read and find out who we are, we'll begin to see that those that are over there are not the people. And they tell you who they are. You can Google some of them. Some of the rabbis will let you know who they are. They'll let you know that we're from Russian and opposed descent. He'll know who they were. And this is the thing. They're, they're, they're imposters. They're not actually the actual people. And we're supposed to think that. And so America has tricked us to make us think that those are the people and they're having compassion on them, but at the same time saying, we're nothing. We were just product. You know, we were just actual property that they purchased. And when you do that, you make us feel less than and you begin to put them on a pedestal, which is why we can't understand what's going on. This is why when you begin to find out who you are and what's going on, you begin to have a certain dignity and a certain pride about yourself and you won't act that way. You won't let them prostitute you and have you out there you know, pimping you and stuff like that, doing things that are not of y'all and influencing the masses. And that's what they're doing. It's the same thing as buck dancing, bojangling, what I call it, out there, you know, clown dancing and stuff for them. That's the same thing most of this music is because it's putting you in a position where you're actually passing a negative message to those that don't need a me negative message. You're ruining the generation to come with this foolishness. And it's like they're putting flashy things in front of them, but they don't realize it's a price that they have to pay to operate that way. And a lot of people want to do this. And it's like, that's why you don't have to have no talent now. All you got to do is sell out. And you sell out, then you, you're playing your music on the radio every day because you sold out and you begin to pay a price for that that you're doing for that fame. And so uh, I hate to keep going, y'all, but I'm just trying to really bring it home. Go ahead. Seven. What then? Joshua all has not obtained that which he seeks for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, Yahuwah has given them the drop of slumber, eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear. And until this day, and David says, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Never. But rather through their fall, Yeshua, salvation has come into the other nations for to provoke them to jealousy. See that? Salvation has come to the Gentiles to provoke us unto jealousy. They don't read this like the, the, the Christian. They skip this here. Say, oh, none of that matters. We all the same. We all the same in the sense that you have to be saved to, to come to Yusha Mashiach in order to come into the kingdom. But we're not all the same based upon the bloodline of what the most high is dealing with. Like he has a business that he's going to deal with concerning his people. And, and they don't, they want to mix it all into one bowl and say, okay, yeah, this is it. Once you do this, nothing else matters. Well, if you think nothing else matters, then I got a child that's coming up into this system that we're set in. I, I'm telling him, I got to tell him then he's from Africa and that's it. Nothing else happened prior to that. You were just a slave. And see, that's the nothing else matters. That's what that leads to, nothing else matters. So you have to really know who you are. And it's not about, like I say, bragging or boasting or being cocky. It's about saying who I am so I can identify with something like everybody else is identifying with. Everybody else identified back to their roots. You can't tell a, a guy that's, like I say, that's saying that he's, uh, uh, I would say just, you just, you can say Asian, but if he's Chinese, you better not call him Japanese like that because he's gonna say, hey, I'm not Japan. Like that, you know, like, but we try to mix it all the same because they do look, they look the same in some sense when you see them, but they're not the same. They say it like that, you know, but I'm just saying, but they're not the same. You know, what I mean by that is their tone. Just like our tone is the same tone as some of those, even though they may be shade darker, some of them. But this is the problem. The problem is when you don't have an identity, then you don't know what, you know, what you are at all. You just think that you were just nothing at all. And so this is what they teach. And the reason why they can't extinct this and get away with us and, and do just straight genocide because this had the most high is coming for people. And he's not just, if that's the case, 
Look at the Native Americans. They're gone. You can't, every, every blue moon, every once in a while, you'll see a Native American. I don't see one every day. Look at us. You see us every day. You see us all the time. And they had this whole place. They, they inhabited this whole side over here. America was theirs everywhere. And you don't hardly see them because it, it shows the difference, right? That's the thing. So it, it puts us in position to be the people that the most high would be scattered abroad because we're not disappearing. It's hard to get rid of us. And look at all the, the killings and the murders. Look at the the people that are disappearing, do all the research on the women that are disappearing and children that are disappearing. I'm talking about of our descent that are disappearing and look and see what's happening and look and see, does it does it line up with what you see? And even after everything that went on, we're still here. And it's a lot of us here. I see us every day. Certain areas I may not see us like in certain rural areas, but in, in general, I see us every day. And I can go to a city where there are tons and tons of people at and don't see a Native American because they've been distinct out. And that's the reason why, because the Most High is showing, these are the clues he show you that you are the people. I mean, it's not nothing that we're trying to, you know, like say anything to be a, a slap somebody in the face, whatever you want to call it. We're just saying the truth. I just refuse to lay down and, and take the identity that they've given us in school, telling us all these lies about Christopher Columbus discovering America and all this kind of stuff. No, it's just a bunch of stuff they tell you to get you indoctrinated so you can just start right there with your belief, like discovering something. You can't discover something that was already in half. That's it, like I can't find your $10 out of your wallet. I mean, like, let me get in your wallet and get you, I found your $10, that's just the same lie. I can't get your $10 from out your back pocket and your wallet, it's your $10. So I can't discover it. That's it, so we have to look at this for what it's worth. So we did that. So Roman was showing that he didn't cast away his people. And so when we look at, uh, look at Revelation chapter seven, and this for, you know, just to be fair about the situation, we're not saying people are not going to make it in. But what I am saying, there's a people, yeah, and then there's a people that's going to be coming in. Also, and we're going to be actually, you know, it's just a different, like when you look at the scripture, when it talk about the Shamayim, it talks about great is your reward and certain things. Like we want to make it like, just because we've been taught, oh, you got to be fair across the board and that's you wrong. Don't do this equal right. Most high don't operate like that. He operated in rank and order. That's the thing. And see, if we respect that, then we'll understand why I'm saying this. But we think everything got to be the even. Ain't no different from a man and a lady. And ain't no different from the, all the children the same. It's not the same. The firstborn had a different than those that came after him. So it's like we can't think this across the even playing field stuff. The people that are teaching us even playing field don't play even playing field. They play undercut. Look at Cointel Pro and some of these FBI things I was telling you about looking at and see what they did. And was it an equal playing field when they began to assassinate some of these people that they assassinated. Yeah, I said it. So <laughs> let's go with it. Yeah, so where we at now? So we're gonna look at Revelation 7, 1 through 7. Revelation 7, uh, seven. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, Revelation chapter 7. Starting at the first verse. Uh -huh. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. And the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Yah. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, to we have sealed the servants of Yah in their foreheads. So our God and for his. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Joshua. Of the tribe of Yehuda was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Gad was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Asher was sealed 12,000, the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000, of the tribe of Shimon was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Issachar was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Zebulun was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Yosef was sealed 12,000. The tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. Oh, so keep going on down to that. So the tribe, after this, I beheld and lower a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And, and that's fine. We don't do 10. But the point is, I'm saying all that to say we see those sealed 12,000 as we go down and then he talked about after this, I beheld a great multitude. So he's not blocking the door from people. Like see, people, what people are trying to do, they're trying to, they're trying to skip to the end and like that and just try to skip to the end. But we ain't in the end. We still dealing with stuff here. 
based upon things that happen. They want to skip to the end without addressing the things that led us to, we, to us getting to the end. And we are the thing that, that led to us getting to the end because, like I say, we identify, I identify with being Ivan, like I say, based on the, the word that they get Hebrew from. And so this is what we're looking at. So we're not going to skip to the end and look at now. This is after they've accepted Husha Mashiach and those that were not sealed were actually part of the great multitude. Okay, yeah, we get that. But while we're here, we have to walk this thing out. As we walk it out, we have to deal with who we are as we are here now and what are we dealing with and who do we identify with. And that's what's actually, that's what actually unlock our understanding from being blind to what they have taught us based upon what the truth is. And so uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 15. We're just trying to lay a foundation here before I get to Exodus. I don't want to just start in Exodus and say, oh, you know, no, no, we're going to get to the meter thing. Like I say, we looked at that Romans and we looked at, we're not cast away. And so we're going to look at, you look at Revelation where we're not singling everybody out either. But now we're looking at, Matthew and show you the basis of whom they say, like in the Christian church, they say, Jesus, we say Yahushua. This is what he said. This is how he felt when he come. Because they, they always want to look and say, well, what did he say? Well, this is what he said when he came. He, he wasn't just embracing them like that. He came and he had a mission. And the mission was, was sabotaged because of the fact that we wouldn't latch and hold. But if we begin to latch hold and do those things, he's not forgetting that we are the actual natural breath because we were the ones that were there they were actually worshiping him. It was never those ones. They were worshiping idols and stuff. And, and they're still worshiping idols to this day. When you look at the Christmas and all this stuff, it's like it's like another, it's like worshiping something different. Matthew 15. Yeah. Matthew 15. Then Yahushua went thence and departed to the coast of Zor and Zion. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Adonai, son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. Now, now Paul does say he answered her not a word. He ignored her. When he said he answered her not a word, he, he heard her, but he didn't respond. So, and look what it took for her to get his attention. So this is what we're trying to get at. So Gentile be humble. Like that, you're not coming in like you're just taking over something. Like now we're supposed to conform to what you think. You're supposed to conform to what we know or as what the scriptures know through what we're reading. So it wasn't nothing where you were just taking over anything like that. Yahushua Mashiach is going to explain to you. And this is, what we, this is why we go back to Yahushua Mashiach. They'll go back here and show you some tithes and all this kind of stuff. Let's look what he said now. This was around this same time. They were talking about some tithes. So let's look. Go ahead. And his Talmudian came and besought him saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Yashraal. Now, why did they send her away? Say, send her away. Because they knew who she was. They knew that they knew the mission. They was they everybody had was 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 danced to one drum beat. They knew what they were supposed to be doing. Go ahead, babe. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Adonai, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. She told she he called her a dog. In that disrespect, but now I say, no, nah, he's nice and, and just we coming back for some floating on the clouds looking like this malnutrition guy. I mean, no, nah, no, nah, he said, you're a dog. He said, and that's the thing. This is what we want. We don't want to look at the rough sides of you, some shit, when he whipped him out of the temple and stuff. We all want to look at, you no, know, he's love and this and that. You know, it's like we have to look at things for what it's worth. We can't look at things based upon what they've taught us. Like we look at love, it's not all just happiness. Love is rebuke and all kind of stuff comes in with that. So it's like, so go ahead. And she said, Truth, Adonai, get the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Yahushua answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your belief. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And that's the thing. So it was the faith. That's why I keep dealing with faith. That's why I say we have to have faith as a people because that's, what, that's why she was able to come in and get that bread. She was able to get what she needed because of the faith that she had. That's why we have to have faith. When you're on the street corner hollering, telling people they're going to be going to hell and this kind of stuff here, what, what, what you're saying is now you don't need no faith. Your faith is hollering, telling them that. That's not doing anything. That's just rhetoric. That's the reason why I say I don't identify with that group like that, with any type of camp or anything. Because what he's moved by now is what I told you in Hebrews 11. He said he's moved by faith. Now faith, which is something thing. Hopefully he's not moved by anything ain't different. So us being the people is one thing, but us having a faith is another. So we have to have faith. Like this is why you see those that are out there getting killed and things that happen because they're not living for Yah. 
you have to ask and the curse is there because it was there back then. When we came over here on ships, we wasn't living for them. It was through disobedience. Everything that we were doing, we always get caught up into another nation's mess. And this is what happened when we got here. It's like we didn't cut it off when we got here. They introduced Sergio Borgio to us, they introduced the systematic religious system in the Roman Catholic system to us. And we began to grab hold to that and say, okay, all we got to do is just believe and that's it. Don't do nothing else. They erased our heritage from the race. Don't worry about anything no more. All you need is Jesus, what they said. And so this is what we have to realize. We can't operate like that. We have to operate from a sense of knowing who we are, having faith. But at the same time, there's a work that we must do. And the work that we must do is to, to be a righteous individual unto Yah. We can't just live lawlessly and then think that just because we're the people, that's enough. But since we are the people, we begin to live a righteous life and show those other people that we are the light and they begin to come into the light. And this is the thing. This is when it really be, begin to be true. And say, if you'd be ashamed of me now, I'd be ashamed of you then. So it's like, don't, the, the shame part is telling people this because they don't want, they like, what are you talking about, man? We were taught this way. We believe that. And a lot of people are ashamed because they don't want it. You may be ashamed to tell somebody you the people. What you ashamed for? When you worry about him being offended, it's best that he be offended with the truth. Then you just go along with his lie. That's where the separation comes in at. But when we lay down and tuck tail, then, you know, we coon out. We say, okay, don't worry about it because he's of a different nationality. We can't tell him this. What's the secret? That's the thing. Was it the secret when they put the, the Sergio Barger on the wall and begin to tell us all these things Christopher Columbus discovered? That was no secret. So this isn't a secret. And this is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, I am saying that I'm referring to myself as the people of the book who they're talking about when they say Israel through the tribe of Judah. And that's where Yahushua Mashiach comes from. And this is the problem that comes in that in Christianity, you've been taught, don't worry about it because it's neither Jew nor Greek nor this or that. That's salvation. We all got to be saved through Yahushua Mashiach, but that doesn't erase who the people are. Can you disappear just because you've been saved? Does my skin go another way to another? No, it don't. I'm still who I am. That's the thing, and this is what they want to do because no one else, that's not a problem with anybody else. That's only a problem with us because they have hijacked our, you know, I don't like, like to use that word religion. I like to use that kind of loose, but they have hijacked the system in which we worship Yah and turned it into a different system. Yeah, yeah, they turned it into something different. So this is what we want to look at, and that's why it has a problem, and it doesn't matter whether you're white, black, or nothing matters. No, no. To the most high, it matters because this is what, what, what our children are dealing with. We have to teach them true history. They got to know why uh, he began to do a certain crime and the Gentile did the same crime and the Gentile gets two months of probation, he gets 12 years. It's an unequal system. That's the thing. So this is what we have to look at. And that's the new slavery, the system that we have, the system, the propaganda, everything that we have is mental slavery now, it's mental bondage. They're putting it out there and we're latching hold to it and we begin to eat it and begin to try to live and act these things out not realizing the people that are acting these things out are paying a great price. Most of these rappers and stuff, they're selling out. And they have to, to do things that they don't want to do in order to obtain this fame. But we think we're just going to skip past that. No, it's not going to work. So that's no sense of letting them be the forerunners. But they don't have a problem. That's why I say the Oscanizer Jews, those that are running the radio station, the Arabs, they're putting them in the forefront and letting them be the leaders of our people. Like when we see people... Uh, these certain rappers and stuff like that. We see Kendrick Moore and all these saying the Hebrew. They're not living a, a whole set apart life. They got they'll make one song or two songs. And we won't believe they're they're the 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 Ibra, you know, saying of the of the people of Yah just because they made a rap song and then they go back to doing whatever they was doing under the sun. No, that's not that, that's not supposed to be our pattern. We don't let them pick who we're going to follow. That's the thing because they're still in the world. They say love not the world, neither the things that are in it. So we're not supposed to love the world. They're still in the world. They're not living a set apart life because they do live a set apart life and they take a stand. They disappear from this from the air. They don't be no longer in the air. It's like, what happened to this person? They ain't doing good no more. But they don't want them in the line like no more because they're not cooperating. Right. That's it. And that's the thing. So we can't use these people. Don't let them give us people like that. You know, we don't, they don't make who we follow. I mean, they begin to give us no pattern that we choose. So we read that. <clears throat> Let's look at 1 Peter 2, and we're going to look at 1 Peter 2, but look at the first verse first, and let's get this straight about, you know, who he was talking to about the marvelous light. So we, it's, it's good to quote scriptures and stuff. They sound good and stuff. We, we quote these things, and they sound good. Now, it's no, it don't mean we can't be, you know, a royal priesthood or anything like that, but we are a priesthood through Yahushua Mashiach anyway. That's it. And so we don't have to identify with something different. He's trying to reassure them who they are. 
because they didn't have any, any identity with Yahushua Mashiach or with us as Israel. They did it, so they were grafted in. And this is what they don't want to preach. This is the true gospel right here, being grafted in and, and, and realizing that there's a responsibility when you're grafted in, you don't come in taking charge. You don't come in doing things unless you've been, when you see, even when you look at Timothy and you see him having a mixed situation going on there, I think he had like a, a his mom and dad with two different nationalities have it went, but he was under Paul. And, and that had to happen for a reason. You know what I'm saying? That was done through carefulness. You know what I'm saying? Because he actually was actually the son of Paul's boss. I mean, he was actually with Paul. Paul nurtured him. He was like, Paul was like, we would say his spiritual father in a sense. So he knew how to approach the situation and how he had to operate and do. He operated in full faith through Yahushua Mashiach. He didn't come in on his own. He came in under the, under the apostleship in which people don't want to even look at. Now, he came in through the apostleship. And the apostle had to actually ordain him to actually do what he needed to do based upon his word. That's why when Paul, like I said, when he wrote to the slave master, he said, if he owe you anything, he said, put it on my tab. I count him worthy of the brother. So Paul stamped Timothy. Timothy didn't just show up out of nowhere. That's why he heard him and said, come on, let's get you circumcised so they won't act a fool. You mean, so I'm just saying, so let's look at these scriptures. Don't just let people tell you stuff. That's why I read the whole Bible. I'm not going to read the, just the end part and just the middle. Of, you know, I read it all. That's why way back then when preachers, when preachers were tricking folks out their money and talking about tired, I've been through that stuff was a joke back then. But I cooperated with a lot of that stuff because I wanted to fellowship with people. But I've been through it. I always would say stuff for people that was wanting to hear what the minister said, didn't want to hear it because they want to be ignorant to it because they don't want to let go of this actual trick, pretty much, that's been this wool that's been pulled over the eye. They don't want to, they don't want this wool to be pulled over. It's feel good. I like to get in here and get this kundalini spirit and, and, and get the acting a fool. You might make me slack off from that, telling me that. Don't say that to me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying that's pretty much what they're saying when they don't want to hear it. And so we have to look at this for what it's worth. Tim didn't just show, out of no, show up out of nowhere. He was stamped by Paul, and Paul laid hands on him, began to send him forth and let him do the work that he needed to do. Like, so, I mean, like I said, I think he was actually doing the evangelistic work. You know what I'm saying? So let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse uh, 1. Chifa, an apostle of Yahushua HaMashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, mind. so basically, so basically, I just want to say, uh, just looking at this, I mean, okay, so we don't get into any more of that, but this is what I want to look at, show you where this is being, who this is being read to. This is being read to these strangers. This ain't saying nothing about Israel like that, but we get this quoted to us and people, it's hard when you hear, you say, oh man, I've been thinking that so long. A lot of scripture we'll get into that was written and people don't get the whole thing. They'll read just the middle of it and not realizing that as you read it all, it began to take on a different meaning like that. Even the tithe scripture, when I talk about Malachi, that starts off talking about the priest. That's who robbed y'all, not the people, but the preacher tell you, you are robbed and even this whole nation. Well, who are all the nations that's going to call you blessed? Like that. So it's like, so we look at the whole thing, look at all of Malachi, and you begin to see who have really robbed them and what, what are they robbed them from? Not just telling you, you know, you robbed them, you're going to be cursed with a curse. Now they were going to be cursed with a real curse. And this we have to look at. So when we look at this word, word, he's not talking to us at this point. So let's look at the next one. We're going to look at uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 9 and 11. Okay, nine, 9 and 10. Yeah, nine, ten. Chapter one. Chapter one. Start off at the ninth verse. Receiving the end of your belief, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied the grace that should come unto you. That's the way you're at now. That was nine and ten. Oh, nine and ten. So start. See nine and ten. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, First Peter chapter two. Is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, starting at the ninth verse. Okay. Yeah. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, and I know that's not a period, but we're stopping here. So at what point were the Israel in the darkness not too much? We just read where he called them dogs. So it's like we're looking at this right here to look and see these people, the doors being opened. Now, this is after Yusha Mashiach has passed, and we fast forward. And this is what he's telling them. Go ahead. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Yahuwah, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Okay. And so this is the thing. So you hadn't obtained mercy at first because the door wasn't open until you. 
that was no way for you to get saved. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, so quit letting people force stuff on us and just reading, like preachers getting, they minister everything. We just, it sounds good. You hear the music going, ah, he called you out of dumb. Isn't that, you know, just get to screaming and shouting like a rock star. And you take this stuff, when you read it all, there's no way to deny, to deny who he's talking to. You see exactly who he's talking to. That's not us. That's the thing. And so that's those that were able to come in. And look who wrote it. <laughs> look who wrote it. The same person that we'll look at. I'm not even going to get into that because that's a little bit much. But as Peter began to have, Peter was hungry. He began to be on the rooftop. He began to have a vision of, of uh, four-footed four beasts and unclean things. And, and the Most High began to tell him, you know, he said, uh, you know, you should have a and tell him, uh, uh, Peter, raise, arise, kill, and eat. He said, no, Lord, but I've never eaten anything that was coming to unclean. He said, don't call anything coming to unclean what I have made coming to unclean. He was talking about the Gentile. But at the same time, Cornelius had a vision. He saw a man standing in front of him. He said, I need you to go and find Peter, one joker who, 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 who resides in the house. I need you to go find him. And as Peter began to find this guy, this is when he began to see that he was Cornelius of the Italian band. He said, all his house was serving Yah. And, and he began to give much arms unto the house of Yah and stuff. So Peter had to accept Cornelius. And the Most High had to send his joke a vision first before he accepted. He was that deep into who he was. So now we see Peter is writing unto these Gentiles right now. You see what I'm saying? So he used this same person. He had to tie this down in his heart. Like, we got to get our pride of who we are towed down so we can begin to introduce this word into those that are not of the actual uh, identity of who we are. That doesn't take away who we are. This doesn't conflict with who I am. Me saying I'm a follower of Shiite doesn't, doesn't conflict with the fact that who I am as a people. There's no conflict there. It's a conflict because they want to put it all into one thing and say it doesn't matter. It does matter. I mean, it does matter. It matters to me because everything else matters to you. That's the thing. So it matters to me who I am, but at the same time, it, it shouldn't stop me and it shouldn't allow me to shut up the gate, the gate of Shamayim from those that need to come in. They need to know what they're coming in to. They need to know I'm not, um, um, uh, you know, subscribing to Sergio Borgio in the life that been told. So this is a hard thing. So if they if they really come in, like some of the people that I do see that are Gentile that are in, there's a certain spirit, a certain Ruach upon them. There's a certain humbleness upon them. I don't know if a lot of you see certain guys, even when you see certain guys like seven prepper trumpet guy, you know, he has a certain, there's a certain humility that's a, upon him. You can see, you don't see that in certain ones. When our people are being killed in the street, these the people that are saying they're Christian, they're talking about he shouldn't have did it. You know what I mean? Like that, you know, he should have been obeying the rules and, and they're giving the police uh go find me stuff so they can get their lawyers and all this stuff. But they saying they into Christianity. You know what I'm saying? But they want us to just accept Sergio Bajo and forget who we are. And look what they're doing. They're not taking a stand for the people that are out there that are being murdered and stuff like that. They're not taking no stand for them. And so we can't let them pull the wool over our eyes, you know, for what, you know, when you see the ones that are out there, either, I'm not talking about the people that are out there acting a the fool either. I'm talking about those that are that are saying that they got the Holy Ghost. You know what I mean? We call the real Haggadets that are actually saying they'll tweet something or they'll put something on there and say, the police doing the job. We respect the blue. All this stuff here. Yeah, all that stuff means that you know, we, we respect the blue and all this stuff. All that just means that they kill them if they get out of line. That's what I interpret that as. Like that, even if they are not saying that and you're not taking a stand, you're not getting on the front line trying to do something about it, then what you're saying is you agree with it. Like that, when anything else goes wrong, they get out there and say something. You know, look what happened Look what happened when Chick-fil-A situation went on. Where was it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's get down to the nitty gritty. When that, when that situation went on, they went to riot. They said, yeah, we, we rolling. They, they, they like to they swarm that place. There's so many people at Chick-fil-A, you can't even get in because they took a stand for that. They thought that was righteousness. So they think that's righteousness when they kill us. So I'm just trying to show you, don't, don't let nobody make you accept no certain religion. That's why the apostle said, if I or uh, uh, angel from Shamanin preach any other gospel, let them be a curse. You're not going to preach a different gospel to me and I see what you're doing. I'm looking at, and if I didn't see what you, you were doing the right thing. I'm not going to let you tell me different what I see right here. But what I'm saying, I see you not taking a stand. I see you out there, those that are saying that they are Christians, the, the Gentiles. They're not making a stand when they, when we when our children are being killed in the street and, and you know being uh you know murdered and all this stuff is happening. They see an unjust system when the, when the police gets off and and we see that he was wrong. They're not taking a stand for none. They they will fund him and let him get off. They don't care about this like that, and they want us to adapt hold to the lies that they've been told. This is why. The, the, this is where the pride I have come in, and I'm not going to dumb myself down to get along. If, if I run into one and they ask me what I believe, this is the story they're going to get if they got time to hear it, 
And if they say that's the end, are you prejudiced? Then I'd rather you go that way because you don't accept the yah I serve. You want to accept that false yah, the one that they gave you. And I'm fine with that. I'd rather know it than to not know it. And that's why I look at it. And this is what I'm this is what I'm trying to clear up when I say Christianity versus Hebrew Israelite, but I'm saying in Hebrew, the word comes from Ibram, Ibram. So it's like we have to look at that, which is of Shem. So, and that's that's what I mean by the people of the book like that. I'm just not on the street corner telling people that they're gonna go to hell and stuff like that, that nature. I'm trying to, they need to be showed the way in. And the way that they be showed in is a hard way. It's hard to hear now he's not white. And this is just the hard truth. We can't say, oh, we don't see the coon wanna say, well, they don't really say. No, no, you know that white don't come from the earth. You know what I'm saying? So like, so you wanna look at this now because you feel uncomfortable. You may have some memories that's of your congregation that of a Gentile descent of different descent. You don't want to offend them. Yeah, he's still here for them, but they need to know that that picture is a false shot. That's not a picture that's supposed to be a graven image or anything that's supposed to be made you know, of anything that's supposed to mirror someone from the Shemayim or that was even here. We're not supposed to serve no images. That's why you see all these Apostle Peters and all these different uh, Dominiques and all this Saint, this Saint Mary and all this stuff on a lot of those other Catholic churches, because that's what they serve, idols. All right, so we did that. Let's look at Joel. Got quite a few scriptures here. Uh, let's look at Joel chapter three. Just trying to bring this home so we don't want to get this mixing to screwed or whatever like that or mixed up on who we are and what stand we're taking <clears throat> along with what people have painted as we've been you know, growing up to hear what they say you're supposed to be. Christian, or this and that, no, no, this ain't Christianity. I keep saying over and over again, and I'm not standing on the street corner telling people they're going to go to hell. But what I am saying, those that want to latch hold to this truth, have to accept this hard truth for what it is. It ain't both, it's just this is the truth, not the fairy tale that we've been told. And so let's look at Joel chapter three, nine, eight, five, and start off at the first verse. Joel. Well, behold, in those days, and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Yehuda and Jerusalem, I will also gather all the nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Joshua all, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they make drink. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Zohar, and Sinai? These are the images of Yah. Go ahead. And all the coast of Pelasheth. Will you render me recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Yeah, and so that's what I'm trying to get at now. For those that say, oh, this ain't that. You know, this ain't for right now. Let's go back with pay. For those that want to say, you know, this ain't for right now. He's talking about a time that already happened. Let me show you what the same book is saying. Go one page back in chapter 2. Verse 28, just, just go back to one, one chapter back, chapter two, verse 28, Joel. Uh, Joel 2 and 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my ruach upon all flesh. Pause. Now, I don't have no problem with this part. You know what I'm saying? And this is the same part they're saying in the last days, he's going to pour his ruach upon all flesh, saying this right here. And it ain't skipping no thousand years apart. We just went one page back. Go ahead. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Okay, and I just want to just kind of just uh point that out. So just saying, so yeah, it's all, it's not going to, the most high is not just letting it slide. It's just not for us to actually go out and try to execute judgment. And so when we look at this word, word we can't grab stuff out and use it and don't grab it all. That's the thing. So when we look at everything, we look at all that's supposed to happen. He's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And there's going to be judgment upon those that did the wrong thing based upon the most high. He's not going to just let it ride just because, you know, we think it's just one big happy thing going on like that, like everything seemed to be. That's why we get into the blue pill versus the red pill. Like you can actually just ignore everything and keep rolling like you was, or you can wake up and begin to see that now you've been duped and hoodwinked and that this system is really set up against you. What you thought was the land of free is the land of bondage. Try owning some land giving you a few examples. And if you don't pay your taxes, if your mama don't pay tax on the house, then the state comes in and take our house. And the house begin to go into a tax sale. Try not paying just, you know, just anything you're supposed to pay out here. Everything is set up as some form of bondage. We've been targeted in every area. All our neighborhoods, you see it most of the time in the African-American neighborhood, you see a check cashing place that's going to charge you a percentage to cash your check. 
you see the uh, you see the liquor store, you see all kind of crazy stuff. You see the church on the strip on the street corner too, because they're pimping and trying to get money from you. See a ton of them there, and there's no change like that. And you see all this stuff going on. You see the uh, pay here, buy here, pay here, rent a center, and all this stuff. It's all set up to target you for high interest. That's the thing. So everything is set up to, to come against you. It's all set up this way. All this all this stuff was done by design. All this was done by design. What you got next? Let's look at now. Let's look at X's. I think we didn't fast forward enough. Let's look at X's now. So now I'm gonna go to X's. I had to lay that foundation before I go to X's because if I start in X's, they say, okay, well, you know, that was back then. Now we went first forward. Now we're going back to show you what I'm saying as when I say the people of Yah. We already showed you that Abraham was prophesied that they was gonna go into, into uh slavery and they went into slavery. And we see what happened. We're going to show you that now as we see Judah, the one that said, okay, look, the Judah, the one for praise that said, okay, look, don't kill him, just sell him. And we see Potiphar, you know, the actual officer of Pharaoh come to purchase Joseph and, and, the, and the people of Israel begin to be in Egypt. And this is where we have Moses from. So let's go, let's fast forward to now that all that happened, we fast forward, there's a, there's a Pharaoh that doesn't know uh, Joseph that arises, doesn't know what's going on. I don't know how they get to that point, but this is what they're saying. As we get down to the end of it, we see that Moshe is beginning to be visited by Yah because of the pride of the people of Israel, because of what the, the task, the task that's been upon them, how they're being mistreated. Same thing here now. Like, what did the scriptures say? Let's parallel this thing. It'll be just like it was in the days of Noah. You get what I'm saying? So don't make it like we can't parallel it like Spirit One said, so, you know, that was back then. That was back then, and the scripture said it'll be just like it was in the days of Noah in the end time. And so we parallel it. Go ahead. Three. Yeah, three, verse one. Now Moshe kept the flock of Israel his own, father in law, the priest of Midian, and led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Korah. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a thorn bush. And he looked, and behold, the thorn bush burned with fire, and the thorn bush was not consumed. Oh, even though this isn't the point, the most high that never come for nobody that's just barren, that's not doing anything. You have to have your hands already to something. Remember, most Moshe was actually taking care of the flock. David, same thing, same thing. It's always, you know, something that you're doing. He takes people that's that's going to be actual responsible with some type of test. He didn't just show up. He could have picked anybody. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't he just go pick Eric? He didn't. He picked Moshe. Go ahead. Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. And Moshe said, I will turn, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. I'm sorry. Why the thorn bush is not burnt. And when Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the thorn bush and said, Moshe, Moshe, and he said, here am I. And he said, draw not hither, put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place whereon you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohe of your father, the Elohe of Abraham, the Elohe of Yishak, and the Elohe of Jacob. And Moshe hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahuwah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Mizraim. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I have come down to deliver them out of the land of the Mizraim, and bring them up out of the land into a good land and a large, into a land flowing with milk and honey, into the place of the Kenanim, and the Shittim, and the Emerim, and the Perizim, and the Shivrim, and the Yekubim. Yes, uh, yeah. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Yashra all is coming to me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Mitzrayim oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you unto Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Yahshua, all out of Mitzrayim. And this is the thing. So this is the problem. When we look at this thing, we have to look at this in parallel with stuff like bondage, stuff like everything that we've been doing, you know, with the, 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 in, the unfair just, justice system and all that, everything that's going on. <clears throat> And we see what's happening right here. So the Most High begins to hear you when he begins to see that a lot of pain is going on. So he's not ignoring the situation because I look at this as the modern day really misreign, which is house abundance like that. So he's not just ignoring it, but what it is, there's a call in these last days for people to come back unto the Most High. Like I said, under the order of Yahushua Mashiach, 
And that's when things will begin to be done. Like there's still going to be some recompense for what went on. Let's look at uh, the next verse here. Let's look at five, one, two, three, to try to tie this in. So we see he told them to let the people, he wanted them to let the people go. Yeah, Exodus. In Exodus 5, 1, 2, 3. And these are the people I identify with. Yeah. And afterward, Moshe and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus says Yahuwah Elohei of Yashra'al, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Now pause. Why can't they just hold a feast right there? <laughs> he said, let my people go so they may hold a feast. It was so much chaos going on. So much food. He didn't want them to hold a feast in bondage. That's right. the thing. This is the reason why, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, I don't want to tap into a lot of stuff, but most of the feast days was dedicated places. That's why I say we memorialize them and we do because we would have been in our country at the time. We would have still been there doing it, but we are not there. We've been exiled. And so this is what we're looking at. So if we look at this, what it's worth, he wants them to be Kodesh. Set apart. He's already instituting it right now before we even get to it. He's saying, I want you to be Kodesh. I want you to be set apart. I want you to come out from amongst them and be separated, says Yah. This is the thing. So we ain't supposed to be trying to blend in with no different type of what we would call a religion, basically. Uh, trying to blend in and identify with something different. Even at this point, he wants them to come out so they can be able to go and have a feast unto, for him in the wilderness. Go ahead. Chapter 2. I mean, say uh, verse 2. Yeah. And Pharaoh said, who is Yahuwah that I should obey his voice to let Yashra go? I know not Yahuwah. Neither will I let Yashra go. Now, this is the same thing. And I look at this as this system saying, so who is who is this Yah that makes us be fair unto the people? We're not going to be fair. We're going to be unfair. And the more they keep doing it, the more we see these punishments coming. And these, go ahead, babe. Get into that. You can go on go to the next one. And they said, the Elohe of the Ibram has met with us. Let us go, we pray you, three days journeying to the desert and sacrifice unto Yahuwah Eloheinu, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. And so now, so they're still being unjust, they're still being unfair. And I just begin to do just a little small research and just look at the plagues that are here now that are on those that are actually, the children of those that are actually doing this. And, they, and of course, some are out because of the disobedience, but it's real big to the point where now you see 1-800-MEF opiate and all this stuff is on the billboard and we have all this stuff going on where you see that there's a like hair run is a is an opiate synthesized from morphine oxycodone crystal milk hydrocodone and everything else you see going on along with their children being disrespectful along with them tricked into the system believing they're supposed to take the jab you know just operate trying to be fair now don't get me wrong some of our people are mixed up in this too but when you talk opiates and you talk hair run we know who we talking about for the most part now when you when you look at this crystal milk another one, you see what's going on we see the attack that's beginning to come forth and everything that's happened even this blindness that's come upon them and so this is why we have to look at this for what it's worth to know that the more we draw nine the yard the more we begin to operate in the system the right way in his system see we see when you operate in another system you don't get the results of that system that's the thing. When we operating in his system, we're going to get the results of this system. He has a system too. And what it is, when they actually brainwash you and make you think everything is just fine, the church says it's just all about all you need is Jesus and that's it. And at our side, we don't even say all you need is Yahushua and that's it. So while we listen to that, we know that there's a part we have to play. And they take away that part we have to play and say grace covers it all. <clears throat> grace doesn't give you an institute that you keep sinning. When you, grace is set up for someone that wants to repent and turn from their wicked ways and begin to follow Yah, not keep doing it over and over and over again. But they're saying it doesn't matter. And the church just come on like you are. Okay, people came in as they were. They may have came in with demons and everything on them, but they were supposed to get set free, be healed, and be changed. That's the thing. They're not supposed to just keep coming in day in, day out. And you see this stuff going on. You won't preach on it. You won't say nothing about it because of the fact that you're scared you're going to lose some money or you're going to offend somebody or you can't say nothing because you're 501c3. And you're going to get muted and silent. So we have to look at this way we're from realize that this system here is set up to actually destroy those that want to operate in this system. We have to actually operate in the system of Yah and still be in the system. Like we are in this world, but not of this world. So we have to realize that we're not of this world, but we're in this world. So we have to maneuver, kind of like the chess versus versus checkers. They're playing chess because the move they've been making been set up years ago when they dropped the drugs off in these black neighborhoods. That's when they begin to destroy the actual system, the model of the family. 
and begin to take the fathers out the house, begin to give the handouts until the mothers and begin to say, now we, we don't even want a dad in the house now because if you come in now, they're going to take away these goods and these treats that they gave me. So now we're not trying to get in the hood. So it's like, so we have to look at this system. What was it targeting when it started targeting all the, the stuff they push, you know, and I know a lot of people fall under these ads, but when you get into like them pushing like the abortion and all this stuff here, you know, it's like all this stuff is set up was to destroy us from the beginning. This stuff, all this stuff was set up to destroy us because back then, when you look at Pharaoh, he began to say, look, that's why Moshe was hidden. You know what I'm saying? He was hidden because Pharaoh had sent the decree out to kill them all. Don't let them, don't let the seed live. I want you to kill them. That's the thing. So we see, we're looking at this same system now and it's been put out way from the beginning. It's like now it's to the point where people are so far gone now to if they don't hear somebody, they won't know anything about his. The, the, the school books are being changed. They're instituting a different, a whole different system inside the school. And the children can't be homeschooled most of the time because there's too much pressure on the mom because the dad is in jail. He's on drugs or something is going on, but they got him too busy trying to live this life, trying to be a gangster or a thug or something because they didn't gave him a fake identity. And so this is what we got going on. It's systematic racism. It's done through the system. It's, it's mental, psychological racism, what I call it. Like then they do that to destroy you mentally because you don't have a heritage because they've told you you were just a slave and you're nothing. Like that. And so this is the reason why this is why I identify back when I say look up the 1720 map and see Negro land and see the kingdom of Judah on there where they came and got us. They didn't snatch us. They were crop, they, they had Africans that cooperated, and it was a it was a an intelligent slave trade, is what it was. It was intelligent. It wasn't done you no know, barbaric barbaric type stuff, but they just showed up and started grabbing folks like the movies show you. Get that out your mind. Nobody showed up snatching nobody like that. They had somebody to cooperate with them because they knew how to fight them off. That's the case. That's the case. You'll see that whole side whitewash. And it's not all whitewash. They're still there, still areas where all you see is them and hardly no Gentile like that. So if that was the case, that would have been how that went. That's not how that went. And so we have to realize where we come from. What do I, what do we identify with? We're about to wrap it up. Let's look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, yeah, read the 64th verse, and then we're going to look at James 1 and 1 and tie that in. So Deuteronomy 28, uh, 64 first, that's going to be 240. Yeah, I'll tell you, 240. So we, we're going to read Deuteronomy 28, 64. We're going to pause it right there and go to James uh, 1 and 1. And Yahuwah shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there you shall serve other Elohim, which neither your, you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. All right, we're going to look at James 1 and 1. It doesn't tie directly in with this, but it shows that we were always being scattered. We were always being scattered, and, and it was a pattern of us being scattered through disobedience. Because when you look at this, when, you, when you're looking at the scriptures, when you get to Malachi, you turn the page, now all of a sudden you got Rome and all this stuff, and they were just talking about Daniel prior and, and you know, Babylon and all that. So when you get there and you see the Romans, and all this stuff coming on, you see King Herod and all this is because the Jews had to be exiled back to their land. They came back again. You know, the, you know, the Hebrews came back to their land again. And this is what they got going on. Romans begin to take over, begin to set this stuff up. What, that was a Roman soldier that began to say, you know, uh, truth this word, the son of Yah, when the, when the crucifixion went forth. So, I mean, so let's look at this. Don't just look at it like they show you and how you've been heard in church. Let's read this and see exactly what was going on? The people were constantly going back and forth, you know, from their land. You know, so let's get let's look at this. Uh, James one and one. James, a servant of Yahuwah, and of the Adonai Yahusha Hamashiach, to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad. That's it. I just wanted to read that because it showed that the twelve tribes at that point scattered abroad. I mean, so we're looking at, and that's that's just tying it in. They constantly stayed scattered abroad. They scattered abroad now. I mean, there was always some disobedience that went forth. And it scattered us. We're scattered now. You know what I'm saying? We have to be gathered up from the four corners of the earth. And so let's look back at six. So now we see that, you know, that that happens. Now let's start from after the 64th to 65th verse. And among these nations shall you find no ease. Now look at that. No ease. It's pressure. It's constant pressure. And that's happening now. That's why I have to show people that say, okay, uh, now, man, I don't see nobody going through this at all. That's it. You can't deny the facts, no matter what. Even when you say anything, you, they may show you evidence, whatever it doesn't matter, but these facts, you know, you have to look at these facts for what they're worth. Go ahead. Neither shall the sole of your foot have rest, 
but Yahuwah shall give you there a trembling heart and falling and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Look, we see going on. Every time you turn the TV, oh, my baby, they just shot him and they, you know, they wrong and this and that. You see slaughtering going on again. And if you don't see this happening through the system, you see his brother doing it. the same thing, you know, just shoot him. I had a cousin get killed. Just shot him in broad daylight. Just came around, whipped around the corner, and shot him in the back of the head. Looked like he was reaching for his gun. They fans the jaw right down in broad daylight, midday, like that. So I'm just showing you it's Judah against Judah. It's always been us acting a fool. And, and when you look at this, what it's worth the most high, you see all this chaos going on. And this is like it didn't stop. This is why they have to hear somebody to say, okay, stop identifying with rappers and identifying with these divas and all this stuff here. You know, we have to have real men of Yah. And women of y'all to look up to to say, okay, this is the model. Like we have this situation going on where most of the most of the women I see, even in the kingdom, are, are too busy trying to, you know, turn back young. But they don't want to be the mothers like those that back then that actually prayed and began to, you know, get a breakthrough from y'all. The real mothers there of the church that's going to teach the young because they're trying to be on the same level. We have to have, you know, somebody got to graduate into a point where they can be a leader where they can actually show these other ones how to do things. The men, too. I mean, we got to make sure that we ain't just out here following all these different rap stars and stuff. And these guys see you doing it and they follow them, too. We just put Hebrew on the end of it and the Christian church, they put Jesus on the end of it. And it's still the same mess. It's not the music of Yah. It's not the sounds of Yah. This is the sounds of the world. And they're taking these sounds of the world and they mix it in. This is what I'm saying with the sorrow. The sorrow comes in because you, you took the bait. They gave you something to identify with and you identify with it and it start corrupting your seed. That's the thing. So, like, you think about it. Daddy, a rapper, son want to be a rapper. You know what I mean? Like that. I'm not saying the rapper is bad, but I'm saying if it's what, it's what we see out here that's shooting and killing, then it's bad. Like that. It's like, what are you rapping? Because if you're rapping something that's talking about shooting your brother, I see these guys now, famous guys, children, go right in their foot, footsteps, and they're rappers, and they're rapping about shooting people and stuff like that, and their children do the same thing, or quite a few of them I can name, like that, and their children are doing the same thing they're doing, and this is their identity that they've been given and they were given that identity from somebody else. And then they took this identity passed down, down and down, it's, you know, the housewife stuff and all this stuff, these stars of all these different Atlanta and all this stuff, you know, it's got the corruptness going on. People look, women are looking up to them. You got guys watching it, you know what I'm saying? Because they look, oh man, I like this stuff. They balling and this and that. And it's like, it's really fake. It's false. It's done as entertainment. It's a modern day, what I used to call like the young and the rest of the soap opera. You know what I'm saying? It's a modern day soap opera. It's not real. It's not realistic. And this is what we have as a pattern. And we see this going on. Like I say, that's no separation. And we see this going on. When you get to a certain age, you got to carry yourself different. You got to actually be somebody that's set up as a leader that can actually begin to uh, nurture some of these people in and begin to just, you know, shepherd them into a position where they can know that this system is not, you know, in their best interest. Don't have them in their best interest, basically. So it's like we have to actually look at things for what it's worth and say, okay, now that we see what's going on, why is it happening? What's well, happened because this is what we're eating. You know what I'm saying? We're being fed this stuff. We're being fed this stuff through the propaganda. We're being fed this stuff through every TV show you turn on. Like I said earlier, you can't even turn a commercial on without something you don't want your kid to see. It's always something there. And it's done to, you know, put this stuff here. Like, we don't know where the letter's going to stop. Your LGBTQ is probably going to be a P on it in the end, a pedophile, because it's like they're not stopping. It's like they're making it okay to call those things that the Most High say evil, they're calling them good and they're evil into the most time. People won't say nothing because they know these people. They say, okay, I'm going to offend them. We're not trying to worry about whether they get offended or not. We're trying to worry about whether they allow this to take them to the fire of hell because the most high won't receive them in that type of lifestyle. And But when you're in this system, you have to accept it for what it's worth. So what I'm saying, this the propaganda institutes all this mourning and, and no rest and stuff because it's what you get as a result of following it. When you follow that, that's darkness. That's not the light. So you're going to get this result. And the result is now it doesn't matter. Everything is okay. There's no separation. Don't worry about no righteous, no standards and nothing like that. Just do all you want to do. And this is what we got to look at. Not everything that we can do and still say the most I don't have a problem with that. We need to figure out what's the most we can do for the most high. What, what is the most sacrificing we can do for him to cut off from the world, not try to take much of the world as we can. And that's what we see most people doing on both sides, trying to adapt to the world as much as they can so that it doesn't look like they're sinning versus trying to stay away from the world so they can know for a fact they're not sinning. And this is what we have to look at. Stop trying to do all you can do. It's not an eat all you can eat or a buffet. Well, when you do that, you begin to mix all this stuff up. And next thing you know, you begin to take on so many thoughts of the world and the world begins to raise you. 
and you begin to be a product of the world. And that's what it is. And the, and the product of the world is created through those that listen to the rhetoric and the propaganda. And look at the TV show. They show you all this stuff and you see the, all the bad places. You know what I'm saying? When they, when they show these other countries and stuff. Not to even get into that, they always show the, the rundown parts of them. They don't show when people are living prosperous in these areas so they can paint that bad picture. That's why when they show Africa, they show that to us. They show the people out there that are hungry and this, they won't show anything civilized. They're half naked with a, 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 some kind of, uh, what is this? They uh, ain't going through it, no stuff. They show this stuff, kind of, they won't show you somebody living martyr. They got businesses over there. You got people over there that's operating and functioning and they're operating on a high level. This is the thing. That's why I was saying like, you know, you know, eventually people that can like at least get like a passport or something, get it. So you'll have it. I mean, that we're trying to run nowhere, but it's always good to exercise your rights and have something that you can have so you can say that, you know, okay, I got this in case I need it. It don't mean that you're trying to create something or do anything. It means that you're open for the rural high congestion to, to begin to move upon you. you. You're set up because it's not, we're not trying to escape anything because you can't escape nothing. Everything that's set up here is set up here. The judgment must come forth. So if you're in the, in the most high, in the Mashiach, you're going to be okay anyway. You know, you don't look at the fire furnace. Look at the fire furnace. Look at the, 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 the three Hebrew boys that was in the fire furnace. The fire wasn't even burning them. Look at everything that goes on. Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed. Lot getting a chance to get out of there. The whole world being destroyed. Noah and his family getting to get out of there. He always have a provision for you if you're in him. But you're, if you're not in him, then you have to suffer. Get killed in the street. Be, you know, an unjust system. You know, if there's a job the most high got for you or something like that, he's not going to allow them to be unjust with you if you and him, if he sent you there. If the door has to open up for you. That's the difference. But we have to let them know that it doesn't work like that for them. They don't have that assurance. That's the assurance we have. You know what I'm saying? It's insurance, basically, because the most high makes sure that we are treated right when we're in him. That's the thing. But we're not going to be treated right as a people. I have to speak for the people that's out there that needs to know that as long as they're out there, under this system that they're not going to be treated right. It's going to be unfair to them. And those that think that they have made it, don't be tricked. You haven't made it because when you actually get to a certain point, you're going to find out there's something more that they want from you in order to keep going that's trying to be a superstar or anything like that. That's no Hollywood star on the most high side because Hollywood is the world. And your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of your life. See that? None assurance of your life. We have assurance of our life. Go ahead. In the morning you shall say, would to Elohim if it were evening. And at evening you shall say, would to Elohim it were morning. For the fear of your heart with which you shall fear, and for the sight of your eyes which you shall see. And Yahuwah shall bring you into Misraim again. See, a, a again. Again. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spoke unto you, you shall see it no more again, and there sh you shall be sold into your enemy for bun men and bun women, and no man shall buy you. That's it. No man should buy you. Basically, no man should be able to redeem you from this situation. Like a, the, the Most High allowed you to get in this, in this situation, then, you know, the Most High has to get you out of it. That's it, you know, because we know you were being purchased because it was a slave trade. So men, person, they purchased you, but no man should be able to get you out of this situation. You won't be able to be bought from somebody that say, okay, look, now he belongs to me. Come on, we're going to treat him better. Now, it's just chaos, straight chaos. And so it's going to take the most high to come back to get us out of this situation that's going on. And uh, and we're going to end with a prayer. Father, y'all, we just thank you right now for just being with us and watching over us. Thank you for the word that went forth, Father, y'all. In the name of the Son, you shall be sure we pray. Hallelujah.